Does anybody know? Why does he do that? Hey, I could agree with I could agree with more completely. Hey, could agree with more completely. How about a battery? <laughs> Come on, I could agree with more completely. It's over. I hey. couldn't agree with you more completely. This is like an Alfred Hitchcock yeah, present, <laughs> you know. Ooh. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Vintage Series. For those of you who didn't know. Yeah, vintage is, Series, two, August 2015? 2015, August 2015. And we right. mentioned in the Classic Series, but you, I looked up what we uh, featured in August of 1975. <laughs> <laughs> Go back and look at the Classic Series and then write to him and tell him. Monterey. Gamay Bo Okay, so when was the last time we saw a Gamay Beaujolais? Well, we haven't used the word Beaujolais in a... Uh, so it's Gamay, uh, right? You know, it's always in Gamay, Gamay. Because, because Beaujolais is an area in France, you know. It's Gamay like, is a sort of, is a clone of Pinot Noir. Not clone, it's a, a species I don't know. It's, of... I don't, know if it's, I don't know what relationship it is to Pinot Noir, but it, it's, it's a lesser version, whatever. You know, on the August newsletter, if you look at the front page, when we were in Bonn... Bonn? Bonn in May... Yeah. In, there's a, of course, there's a wine shop on every corner. It's a small, wonderful village if you get a chance to go there. But they had this smellatorium thing. They had about four or five tables, and each one had like five or six aluminum tubes, and then it had a little covered up postcard thing, and you smelled in the tube, and then it, you would guess whether it was orange or mushrooms oh, or okay. clothes, and oh, then you would lift it up. Yeah, it was really cool. So I did that, and uh, my daughter actually did a little better than I did. Well, she's the cook, you know. But you know, I was telling my staff, because we're working on this wine training, you know, if you're cooking, or you slice an apple, or you slice a plum, plum, or you grind oregano on your fingers to put it in a dish. S you know, smell those things, right? To get to get impressions of well, what of course. these things are. Yeah. Right? I don't think people do that. It's a great thing. And you're a great guy. I know. What are you been cooking like? Oh, you know, what I made the other day. Why I made pouring that? the first wine is not that. No, it's not. I made uh, Augusta Scoffier's. Bechamel from his original thing, and then I put some blue cheese in it and ladled it over a New York steak. Man, oh man, oh man. Yeah, well, duh, Jesus. I mean, that sounds really incredible. That was actually. really good. Um, but you know, his his bechamel has thyme, a uh, little veal roasted in there, and um, then butter, of course, and onions. But okay, this. Was that, a first. Is that impressive for you? This, yeah, it was, this, this was a first. This was a Tempranillo from France. Wow, I forgot. About Domaine that. de Peche. I and, forgot. Yeah, and I'm and I'm going in a, in a district that I had not heard of before. This uh, chat the uh, Vendée de Cau. Yeah, I'd never heard of that either. But you know, it's so I'm going. Wow. Okay, somebody made a mistake. It's really Spain. You mean I never heard of? Oh, this is my friend, um, Claire. Yeah, Claire Baroy brought this in, and I'm, of course I'm assuming it's going to be really terrific, but really, really different. I mean, but then again, it's really not. It really tastes and smells like Tempranillo from Spain. It does. <laughs> it really does. Look at that nose, man. Is that amazing? Now, I, mean, now I remember the wine. I bought this. See my new uh, Apple mm. Watch? Is? Wow. Hmm. What's she doing here? They can't see that. <laughs> Look at this this wine. This wine has so much density to it. I've never seen it's temper. But you're right. It's so, it tastes Spanish, right? Except it really does. It's got a little leaner finish, which I, which gives it that Van de Pey character, right? But it's also pretty dense and chocolatey. You know, it almost tastes mm. like there might be Cabernet in there. You know, I mean, it's got a really robust finish. Really, that terrific. is so delicious. I got to take that home. That, that is really a great <laughs> bottle of wine. It's a nice seven for me. I think it's really good. Yeah, twenty one ninety nine on the shelf. Thirteen ninety nine a reorder price. That's killer. It's got a little life in the end, too. The little acid in the finish this is, is a, carry. This is a wine that's going to be hanging around for a long time. Of course, who knows? They haven't made it for very long. This is 2013, too, which, you know, was a very difficult year in France. One of the most difficult ever. And, boy, did they come through with this one. This is my friend, Claire Baroy, who's a wine importer from France. She's French. She came here from Champagne, France. She grew up there. Mm -hmm. Ended up in Corona. That's like Champagne. Figure that one out. I don't have to. Look at that. I asked her how that happened. She goes, love. <laughs> but, you know, her husband brings in, uh, he, he goes out and buys all those 70s uh, motocross bikes, like the Hodakas and the Husqvarna's and things, and then he fixes them up, does the restore them. And I saw a bunch when I was in France. So all the, They love these vintage motorcycles, these motocross bikes out in France. So this is what he does. 
All right. Next. When was the last time we did a Vino Verde? And this was really good. Uh, not uh, too long ago because I love Vino Verde. It's one of my nose. favorite wines. This, but you know what? When we went to the, we went to Vin Expo in 1993 with my father. Oh, it smells so good. We went to the Portugal booths and the Vino Verdes were just crass. You couldn't drink them. And they have evolved so gracefully. And this one, really? the nose, is amazing. When was when was this? 93. Oh, that's surprising because I've been drinking this wine for a long time and I just love Vino Verde. Mm. They're so clean, crisp. They got a little frizzante to them. It literally means green wine. And green is a euphemism for young, for, for very, very young. And it's usually the, the Vino Verde can be red or white. And, um, and, it, and usually it's the youngest wine on the list. But then there's an area called Vino Verde in Portugal, in northwest Portugal, that uh, only makes this very special demarcated um, uh, white wine that's absolutely incredible. This is one of the best I've ever had. It They're really is incredible. Acidic, but the nose, that wonderful uh, nose of flowers, is just some honeysuckle and flowers. Mm. is amazing. Seventeen ninety nine, which is a great price for Vino Verde. Twelve ninety nine, and I'm doing a ninety six on this. I'll do it's absolutely too. delicious. Really wine. good. Really good. And don't forget, it's got little bubbles in it, so it's not a flaw. And we taste a little bubbles. Tiny bubbles. Oh my god. There you go. your day job, eh? Uh, so this is, uh, you know, I wrestled with this a little bit because I really liked it, but it's from Delicato, I think, right? Yeah. You know, they're kind of a broad, big, big winery, but this is one of their little projects they did, and I fell in love with the wine when they brought it to me, and then they were a little reluctant to sell it to me where I could sell it for, uh, you know, for $13.99 because it's a $20 bottle of wine. And winers like to hold their wine prices, but they gave in, and we were able to feature this. And I think it's just—I really think it's absolutely delicious. <clears throat> just a super bottle of wine. Um, got, got a lot going on, you know. I mean, it's—it's it's a Cabernet Merlot blend. I think it's 50-50. It tastes like there's some zin in there, isn't it? Uh, wine blend. Mm. Well, it has that nice strawberry. Um, mid palate, which yeah, would say Zen doesn't say, but I can't remember. It's in the newsletter. Folks. Anyway, it's delicious, and um, it's a, a 19.99 wine, as, as Paul said, 13.99 on the reorder price. And boy, I do. Uh, that's so good. Hmm? That's really good. Yeah, it's delicious. I'm telling you, I'll do a 95 on that. I'll do 95, 96, 95.5. KLOS. Los 900. Angeles. It's 950 on a thousand point scale. That's right. You already said how much it costs. Yes, I did. Okay. Then I'll put that away, Ed. It actually has some of the character that that uh, Zinni just brought to me. That yeah. I taste this right. Oh, oh man, I, I couldn't so wait to taste this, this wine. <laughs> pecorino. That's the last time I did that. I don't remember Mr. ever doing Pecker. a Pecorino. Matter of fact, I don't remember tasting a Pecorino. Well. It's like Ribola Gialla. It's one of those Italian white grapes that they yeah, say they grow, but you never see one. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I love... If I drink white wine, it is, it's those indigenous white Italians that mm -hmm. just float my boat. I don't know why. I, this is one of them. Love this one. Oh, God, is that delicious. Who brought this in? Maritime. Oh, yeah. I don't remember. This is a really, this is a really delicious bottle of wine. Well, I know. Isn't that great? You know, and you know, it kind of reminds me of the Vino Verde. They, I get this. They, they both have that kind of shy, sort of stone fruit character, and then in the mouth, they're like really nice and acidic, and... And they kind of cleanse your palate, and oh man, can, this is this is a great oyster wine. This reminds me almost of Muscadet. So that's what happens, right? Many indigenous grape varieties that they grow in Europe or wherever stay there because they're very unique. They don't have broad palate, you know, character. They need the foods of that region. This is one that I was hoping would be more capable to float with anything, you know, that we could put on our table. And not have to have the indigenous food of that area. And this is this is a wonderful nose to it. It's got a little floral. It's a really food. delicious wine. Absolutely delicious. You know, and it's not your, it's not a Chardonnay. It's not Sauvignon Blanc. It has no oak on it. It's just clean and crisp and fresh. And it has some some really nice little fruit notes. Um, and it's just fun to play with. It's fun. It's really fun. I, that's a nice seven for me again. I'm really generous today. There you are. God, $12.99 the reorder price, uh, $17.99 on the shelf, and I'll do a $97 as well. I love hey, it. Ho, ho, hey. Of course, it's hard to compare to any other Pecorino because it's the first one. But then again, don't you always remember the first one? Pecker. Yeah. yeah that's mine. No, it's not yours. Hey, cheers. 